guys, Terry from D-Lab on the bench today. We have a Fender Deluxe Reverb style amplifier kit. This amplifier suffers from strange ground issues. There's intermittent hum, rushing noises, echoes, you name it. They come and go. The cause is the grounding system that these amps utilize, which is a piece of bus wire that is soldered across the back of the pots. I've covered this information in the past, but I think we need to dive deeper so that everybody understands what this problem is. So in this video, I'm going to give you a grounding comparison kit versus the vintage Fender original design. And then you can make your decision of what system you'd like in your amp. So first, I'll just pan the grounding system so you can see the piece of bus wire that is soldered to the back of these little crimp on cases that are on the potentiometers and then they eventually end up on the ground lug of the input jacks and then you have a break in the ground and you do the same thing for the other channel so what we'll do is focus on one potentiometer and now we'll demonstrate the typical kit amp configuration ground stack up meaning what does it take for that eyelet ground runner to get to that bus and eventually be grounded to the chassis. Let's go. So we'll start with the typical kit amp configuration or ground stack up. So let's begin with the main chassis. Then you mount your potentiometer to that chassis, but in between the two is the star washer. And if you remove the star washer, you'll see this brass threaded part that's actually pressed into another piece of metal. Then you've got four fold over tabs which hold the rear dust cover on the potentiometer. So we've covered the stack up of mounting the pot to the front chassis. Now on the rear of the pot you need to clean an area of these dust covers, solder your bus wire, and from there the eyelet little runners come up and solder to that and so do your resistors for tone controls. So as you can see there is quite a stack up of dissimilar materials and mechanical connections before your components see a ground reference. How good is that bond? Let's cut to the vintage fender grounding system. There wasn't much of a stack up. You had the main chassis, then a bent brass plate which was a ground plane, that plate had pilot holes for the pots to mount through. All the eyelet runners, controls, input jacks, and resistors soldered direct to that plate. It was very simple and effective. All right, so here's the game plan. I'm going to retract all the controls and jacks. I have made the brass plate, and that will install behind the front panel. Then, I will remount all the controls, reconfigure the grounds, just like Fender did back in the day. Alright, there's the drilled brass plate in its position, waiting the controls, but first I need to remove that ground bus wire from the back and get all the grounds separated. I wanted to show you this before I move forward, this connection was on the back of that pot. I simply peeled it off and you can see the solder is only on the wire. It did not bond to the case. There's the new ground plane in place. So what I do guys to build this is I take a piece of six inch ten thousandths brass shim stock. I slice that and make it three inches wide. Make the bend I push it down into the chassis and clamp it and then I take a drill and I use the chassis as a template to get all the holes exactly where they need to be. Also down here in the corner behind the input jacks the brass plate is soldered direct to the chassis. I also cleaned up the input jack resistor configuration. Now I need to connect all the ground runners and also the tone resistors and we'll be ready to test the amp. By the way, I do not make these plates and sell them. They're custom made for each amp that I have to retrofit. 
Installation of the fender designed ground plane system is complete. Here are the control ground runners going to the front of the plate. The eyelet runners go to the bottom half of the plate. Now the stamp incorporates the proven vintage design. So now you have the facts. I believe that the vintage brass plate grounding system is far superior. And if you weigh out the amount of labor it takes to install that bus wire and all the connections to it, you're better off to spend a few bucks on some shim stock and do it right to begin with.